Welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard, your virtual classroom coach, and this is the place to share best practice so you can be a virtual classroom superhero. Now, in this video, we're going to look at how to get the best out of our internet connections, along with some tips and tricks to achieve the strongest connection possible so your delegates can have the best ever online learning experience. And yes, we'll also look at how a baked potato can have a dramatic effect on internet speed. Before we begin, don't forget to press that subscribe button so you get informed of fresh new content. So, have you ever facilitated an online session only to be told by your participants that they can't hear you or you sound like a robot? Maybe your video starts to break up. Or even worse than that, you get that message, your internet connection is unstable. Then the inevitable happens, you lose connection from your own virtual classroom. And of course it leaves your participants wondering, well, what do we do now? as we are busy panicking as we try and get reconnected. So let's look at the things that we can do to avoid this virtual catastrophe. The truth is our internet suppliers are currently under huge pressure trying to supply a world that is suddenly even more demanding of high-speed internet connections as we, we're busy living our lives virtually with our, our friends, our colleagues, customers, our learners. And it's, it's a time when high bandwidth hungry video platforms have become the norm. Uh, for example, listen to this, in the UK there were 659,000 Zoom accounts registered in January 2020. But by April 2020 there were 13 million and this will no doubt continue to rise. The good news is it means our learners often come to our virtual classrooms more tech savvy than ever before. So it cuts out unnecessary explanations of functionality and it can reduce time wasted in technical difficulties. Our potential learners are also upgrading their standard internet connections to super fast broadband. So back in 2019, 17% of lines were upgraded to super fast bandwidth. And there's also a 25% increase in the amount of data people are using too. Much of that growth is due to online video. Now there's good and bad in this, it just goes to show how our potential learners are embracing this online world as a place to be, a place to play, work, and a place to learn with video. So this is great, but of course it also means strain on our network supplies to keep that bandwidth open and healthy for all of us. Now you may have internet issues, intermittent, continual, and yes, it may well be your supplier who is just struggling during these bottleneck times. However, there may be things that you can do right now to improve your connection from today onwards. Lots of stuff here, so let's have a good look. First, your router. Is it connected to the main telephone socket? Now quite often we're plugged into extensions of the main one which can dramatically impede the speed. So if you can, reconnect your router to the main socket. Next, are you using a micro filter like this? These should be plugged into every telephone socket. They act as a splitter and they separate your broadband signal from your telephone signal, meaning less cross interference and a stronger signal. Next, how tidy are you? If all your cables are coiled and tangled up, it can also create interference. Next, make sure your router is clear of all other technology. So other tech, especially Wi-Fi enabled, can interfere with router signals. So make sure it's completely standalone, never just on the floor. Consider a higher shelf or a table for a greater chance of brilliant connection. Microwave ovens. Yes, they can have a dramatically negative effect 
on router Wi-Fi signals. So my best advice is when you're running a virtual class that requires high data due, due to video, definitely do not be zapping a baked potato at the same time. It will make a difference. Go wired. The absolute best way to make the most of your broadband is to go wired. Use a good quality ethernet cable like the one linked in the description below and connect it from your router direct to your computer. This should give you a much more reliable connection and a significantly speedier one too. Next, do you need a booster box? Some internet companies will sell or loan these to you and this can really help reduce black spots in your home. Your computer can then connect to it as, as though it's your main router, creating a stronger connection and signal. However, these can also hinder if you're not careful. So for example, if you move around your house and take your laptop with you, it may well stay connected to the wrong source and therefore result in what appears to be a weak connection. So for me, if I move away from say my router to my booster box, I'll turn Wi-Fi off my laptop and then back on again. And then it's forced to reconnect to the closest, strongest source. Next, turn your video off. It's really not ideal, but this can be a useful quick fix if you suddenly get warnings of poor signal or reports of dodgy audio. Just turning your video off for a few minutes can help your connection to remain and dramatically improve as well. And you can always retry the video just a few minutes later once the network has, has regained its stability. Now, devices. So if I was to ask you how many devices you have connected to your Wi-Fi, how many would you say you've got? Maybe one laptop, one mobile, one tablet? Well, that may not be all these days. Looking around my home, I have a TV set-top box, a personal notebook, a works laptop, a personal desktop, a personal iPhone, a works iPhone, a personal iPad, and a works iPad. There's also a Wi-Fi enabled doorbell, a thermostat, a garden camera, an Alexa, another Alexa, oh, and another one, plus family devices, so 14 plus. So maybe we have more devices taking bandwidth than we actually realise. So it may be worth counting up all of yours. But what can we do about it? Well, before I go live on a virtual, I turn Wi-Fi off as many other devices as possible. And that frees bandwidth up for my video heavy virtuals. And the other thing is to match up what speed you have purchased with the amount of devices your provider says it should support. And that may be a good case for actually upgrading your broadband. Now, in the description below, there's a link to Ofcom's official internet speed test. You can use this to test your own network, but it also shows what you should expect from the speed you're getting as well. Definitely worth a look. So follow these tips, tricks and procedures and this will ensure you are doing everything you possibly can to get the strongest and most reliable connection for your virtual classrooms. Then it's truly over to your internet supplier. So I hope these tips help. Remember you'll find other content on both audio and video solutions to make your VCs run smoothly on this very channel. But until next time, thank you so much for watching.